Praise God. Thank you, Pastor Rankin. Appreciate it. Appreciate all the music tonight. If you notice the theme of all the songs was how great our God is. How great our God is. Amen. Praise God. The title of my message, No God Like Our God. No God Like Our God. No God Like Our God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you. You can be seated. I probably will approach this in a different kind of way, but uh, Pastor Rankin had asked me to help him with the service this weekend due to his condition of his voice, and I said, well, I'll do what I can. I called him, texted him later and said, I'll do it. Uh, depend on my voice. So we got voice issues. <laughs> Amen. But I was resting a little bit the other day, and uh, I uh, had a scripture in my heart and pondering it, and the way the enemy approached me, and I'm going to, what I'm going to do tonight is maybe a little bit different in an approach, and I'll explain it to you as we go on. The scripture that I have as a text I'll share in a little bit was found in the book of Micah and also one of the favorite ones that we quote so much, rejoice not over me, my enemy when I fall for I shall arise. But there's more to that verse of scripture. And when I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. He was talking about the torments, the things that trouble us. Most of the times it comes in darkness. It doesn't come in the great of day, even though you can be tormented there. But I want you to know our God will raise us up, and God will be a light unto us. And God will be a light unto us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. The scripture is so true and so relevant for our hour and for the day that we live in right this very moment. Thank you, Sister Rankin, and thank you, players and instruments, for praising and magnifying God and magnifying him and lifting him up. What I'm going to do is just maybe a little bit of a different approach. I want to tell a story. Amen. In fact, the business is storytelling used to be the main way that people communicated was if you had a storyteller. I'm not talking about lying. I'm talking about telling a story. <laughs> Amen. I've done enough of both of them to be a little upset. <laughs> Amen. But years and years ago, there was a prince, and he was enjoying all that goes with the prince's surroundings, the wealth, the blessings. And there was a boy that they were both the same age, and he was being raised by an alcoholic father, an abusive grandmother. Circumstances were very straight and very difficult. And one day that young man approached the castle. And as he approached it, the guards roughed him up and gave him a tough time because he wasn't supposed to be on those grounds. But the prince heard about it and went out and retrieved him and had him to come in and be with him, visit and talk. And so... They had fellowship. It was amazing how much they looked alike. And they had the same birthday. It was amazing. And so the prince and the pauper made some decisions and some choices. And the prince said, I'm going to take your clothes and you take mine. And I'm going to go out and see what's going on out there in the world. And sure enough, he left there, went past the guards, went out and found his way to the boy's own home address. And there he began to experience the abuse in that home. Then he began to experience the abuse on the streets. And even in the gangs, he told the gangs that he was 
really a prince. And so they mocked him and made fun of him and gave him a fake coronation. Amen. Maybe some of you are starting to identify the story. But time went on. He even spent a little time in prison. But he was going to go back to the castle and make his way back and exchange places. But when he did, the guards rebuked him, roughed him up, and mistreated him. And he was not able to go back in. So he experienced all that went on on the streets of England. And so the king died, and there was going to be a coronation. And somehow this young man knew he had to make it back into the castle. And he got in, and when he got in, they grabbed him and told him he was not what he says he is. But he had hidden the royal seal of England. And he stopped the coronation by revealing that seal. And then he was crowned king. And the young man that switched places with him, he made him one of the proper nobles of his place. And so the story goes, as Mark Twain wrote, The Prince and the Parper, I feel just a little touch of God. In first, Second Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. For you know the grace of our God, for they know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, and yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through poverty might be rich. If you will... Give me a few moments tonight. I won't try to belabor the situation. But I have been so troubled in my mind, and I want the very will of God. I want the best for this church. I want the best for every individual that's ever walked in the doors of this church. I want the best for everyone that will ever come into this church again. I thank God for the crowds that we've had and the people have been touched. But tonight, I want to take this scripture in Corinthians. And Jesus became poor that you through poverty might be rich. I'm not talking about money. I'm not talking about houses and land. But I'm talking about rich in faith. Because the poor are rich in faith, the scripture says. And he became poor, like you and I. He became a pauper. You see, the prince, Isaiah 9 and 6, said that his name should be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And the prince took on the clothes of the pauper. i got to watch these new steps. You know, I, gotta, I noticed one of our young person almost did a carpet skiing this morning. Amen. And I know this is not poor. I'll be wearing this for when winter comes. But Jesus took on flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. He was misunderstood. He was mistreated. He was turned down. The only people that was a real favor to him was the parpers. You know, you and I cannot know what a person is going through unless we experience those same things. You know, I've never been 84 years old before, 
Pastor was talking about the young people making some changes. Well, I, I taught a lesson not long ago on numbering your years, numbering your days. And he took that and put it and put it where he was eternal, but he made himself a flesh, which mean it was he could be terminated, in which he did. He took the robe of flesh on himself and became a man like you and I. He experienced poverty. They asked him where he lives, he said, Come and see. And there was nothing really there. The scripture said there was no place. There was no pillar for the man the, praise God. For Son of man to lay his head. His house was of no real reputation. He took upon himself poverty that you and I could become rich. If you're here tonight and you're struggling, I want you to know that the prince has taken your place. The prince has given you a chance. The prince has given you an opportunity for the kingdom of God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. I had a buddy when I was in high school, and uh, I couldn't say I was poor, but I sure was short some. And this buddy of mine, we have, I had friends with all of them. He'd come to my house, and he would want to wear my clothes. And he was wealthy. His parents were wealthy. They had more than enough. And he wanted to come and wear my clothes. I had one sport coat, and that's what he wanted to wear. And he'd give me his sport coat, don't tell him what it would cost, and I'd put it on, and I thought, well, all right. But I noticed there were cigarette hole burns in it and stuff like that, and mine didn't have that. But where we were going together, he wouldn't have that ability to burn holes in it because I had that one sport coat. Amen. But you see, he was a friend, and I wanted him to have the opportunity. And I said, well, may I try his clothes on? I can tell you, for honestly, I never was jealous of the young man, but we had an opportunity to be friends. Amen. I want you to know the greatest friend you will ever have tonight is Jesus. And he has got a wardrobe for you like you cannot believe. Praise God. He has a white robe. Yes, sir. He has a covering for you. He has made a way that you could take on all the garments of the righteous. I love you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Amen. He became poor that we could come become rich. Jesus took our place. Amen. He is touched, the scripture says, by the feelings of our infirmities. You know, sometimes we don't want to know what a person's going through. I, I, I've been in places in my life at times that I had to turn it off because I go too far sometimes in my thinking, in my past. I've gone too far in thinking, and so people turn it off. But Jesus never turns it off. He knows right where you are tonight, right where you hurt tonight. Amen. All the pain that you're experiencing, he knows every detail about it. He took your place at Calvary. Let me move to the last part of my message and I'm grateful again for this opportunity to minister to you tonight. Amen. I've often made this statement that somebody said, well, Brother Kite, I, I don't want the rapture to happen right now because I'm young and I want to live more. And then there's those that are wishing, I wish the rapture to happen right now. I'm tired of all this. That's one way to get rid of this pain. We've all talked about it here tonight. Thank you, Brother Joel. Amen. But I have this feeling He's going to make everything new. Amen. Everybody under 33 is going to become 33. And everybody over 33 is going to become 33. You're right there on that point. You're on the point, man. Amen. All that. There you go. Praise God. God's going to take care of it. Amen. Yes, sir. 
Amen. He's going to fix us up, Sister Noel. Yes, he's going to take care of us. Amen. Thank the Lord. Amen. That's what you call rolling it back a little bit, huh? And rolling it forward. Let me close with this verse of Scripture in Micah 7 and 18. Who is a God like unto thee? There is no God like our God. There is no God like our God. Amen, amen. Praise God. No God like our God. Amen. Thank you for the songs tonight, Sister Rankin. No God like our God. That pardoneth iniquity. Somebody said, how can I get out of this mess? I saw on my cell phone the other day that Biden is going to not only cancel college debts, but he's also going to release everybody that was put in jail over marijuana. Yeah. I don't know. I guess he's struggling to maybe ne- make the next election or whatever. But, uh, I don't know what it is. But uh, <laughs> so be it. But nobody can pardon like Jesus can. <laughs> nobody can pardon like Jesus can. He said he pardons your iniquities. To the woman at the well, excuse me, the woman caught in the act of adultery, he said to her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Pardoned. Fixed. Taken care of. Thank you, Jesus. Nobody can do it like my God. There's no God like my God. Amen. Praise God. Michael was way before his time, but the Scripture says those things were spoken For our admonition, the Scripture says. And he passeth by the transgressions of the remnant of his heritage. Zacchaeus, come out of that tree. He was walking by. He said, I'm going to eat with you at your house today. And there is like nobody like having Jesus at your table. Yes, that was that Thanksgiving that we went home. And I said to, I was here in prayer. And I was going home, going to have a nice table spread. And when I was praying, it impacted me. I asked, Jesus, where are you going to have Thanksgiving today? And then it answered, I said, won't you come to my house and be at my table? Nothing like having the Lord at your table. Amen. He took care of the transgressions of Zacchaeus. Amen. He can take care of those things like you cannot believe. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I said, Brother God, how do you know that? It's because he's done some great things for me, and he's done great things. And it said in that verse of Scripture, he retaineth not his anger forever. Amen. He's not angry forever. He delighteth in mercy. He delighteth in mercy. Somebody said, Brother God's gotten soft in his old age. And he's preaching more about mercy and forgiveness. We'll call it what you want to. I remember remember preaching here on forgiveness one time. I was standing right here teaching the church to forgive. And the Lord just smote my heart. And he said, you are a real one to be teaching this when you've got somebody you haven't forgiven. That's how it works on you. I'll tell the stories as it is. And I will tell it. I said, the Lord has just talked to me, church. I'm teaching you on forgiveness, but I have to be the first partaker of the fruit. And I said, right now, unequivocally, I forgive my brother-in-law. I don't know who might be watching tonight, but I am before the grace of God here tonight. I forgave the man unequivocally. And you know what happened? A storm was coming in. That was on a Sunday morning. A hurricane was coming in. We are so, mm. and two people came and helped me board up my house, a saint and a sinner. And then a UPS truck circled in the cul-de-sac, and a man jumped out just before a storm came in and brought me an envelope, and it was from my brother-in-law. And I took it in the house and said, honey, I just got a package from Wayne. She said, well, open it. She didn't have knowledge of it. We didn't have cell phones in those days. We opened it up, 
and the note came out, handwritten with hearts drawn around it. Thank you for my birthday that we recognize. And he said, thank you for not beating me up over this debt. And a check slipped out of there. And he paid us something that he had owed me for 30 years or 20 years. I, I looked and forget the time. But when I forgave him, it was released. Come on, why not have mercy? Why not have mercy? Why not have mercy? Amen. So much. I'm going to declare it just the same. Amen. That's right, devil. Rejoice not over me when I fall. I have fallen. Because I'm going to rise again. Amen, amen. In darkness, when I sit in darkness, the Lord's going to be a light unto me. Yes, he is. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Aren't you glad he's not angry forever? But he is a God of mercy to us. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 19, and said, he will turn again, and he will have compassion upon us. He will turn again and have compassion on us. This is a God of compassion. Isn't it? How many of you have ever enjoyed somebody's compassion? Amen. Amen. You see, when you're married and you live together for years, you have compassion for each other. And you do everything you possibly can to make things better. Amen. Amen. Our God has compassion for you. You're here tonight wondering. He has compassion for you. Amen. He will subdue our iniquities. He'll take care of those iniquities. He will subdue them and take care of those things. Amen. He will get rid of that iniquity. Amen. That is self-will is what iniquity is. He will pursue it and take care of it. And it then said this, and thou will, thou will cast all their sins into the depth of the sea. Right back here is a baptistry. And I want you to know, when you repent of your sins and get baptized in Jesus' name, your sins are cast in the sea of forgetfulness. Hell wants to bring them up to you. Hell wants to, because you've got them in your memory, he wants to bring them up to you. One time it was said of a witch doctor that he was going to cast a spell on a missionary. And every time he would try to call up something on that missionary, he said, I can't call anything up on you. I see nothing but the blood because he has been forgiven. His sins were in the sea of forgetfulness, and the devil could not get to them. Praise be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And then in John 14 and 9, he said, they asked the question, show us the Father and the suffices. He said, have I been so long time with you and you don't know me yet? When you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Philip, why ask us me to show thee the Father? When you have seen Jesus, you have seen the Father. Amen. And his name shall be called Wonderful. It is Wonderful. Counselor. He's our Counselor. The Mighty God. He is the Mighty God. The Everlasting Father. And the Prince of Peace. And I want you to know there's a coronation taking place, fixing to happen. Yes, it's happened in England just recently, but one is fixing to happen in the heavenlies. And the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world is going to be the king of king and the lord of glory. Lord of lords. Would you stand with me, believe in the Lord, and thank God for this beautiful time that we have in the Lord and what he has for us, because there is no God like our God. Amen. They sang first, how great is our God. How great is our God. How great is our God. Take that devil and put it in your pipe and smoke it. We have a great God. There is no God like our God. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you tonight. Walk in the grace of the Lord. Let's give the Lord another good hand clap of praise for that message. Hallelujah.
You know, sometimes we forget, we know, but we need to bring ourselves back to the realization you can't even really comprehend it of what Jesus Christ done for each and every one of you. As he was talking, I was sitting over there thinking about my life. I gave God every reason not to use me. I didn't come from anybody special. I was just the East Texas boy from Woden. Amen. Had a heart for the world, had a love for sin, but God reached down in this young 17-year-old's heart and says, you know what? I'm going to give you a shot in the kingdom. And I'm so thankful for that. I didn't have a dad that could put me on a pedestal. I didn't have a mom that, but God reached down and said, you know what? I'm going to create something new in you. And I'm so thankful for what God did for me and for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Kite. Such a good, encouraging message. And maybe we all need to be a little more compassionate and err on the side of mercy and forgiveness. Because Jesus erred on the side of mercy and forgiveness when he came for us. Amen. Hallelujah. God, I want to thank you for your word tonight. I want to thank you for your messenger tonight. God, I pray that you would strengthen this church body and family together. Let us err on the side of mercy and compassion, God. And never let us forget, God, what you did for us and that there is no God like you. We want to come every single moment in time and praise and thank you, God, for what you did for us on Calvary and how you took our place and how you paid the price for our salvation and our redemption. God, I thank you for it today, and I praise you for it today. And the church said, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for coming. You're dismissed. Amen. Greet one another in the love of the Lord.